Satellite Imagery and Disaster Risk Reduction In 2006 at the UN General Assembly, it was agreed to ensure that all countries, international and regional organizations, have access to all types of space-based information and services to support the full disaster management cycle. Disaster response typically breaks down cultural barriers as people try to find ways to help. After the earthquake in Haiti, several countries and companies turn their satellites towards Haiti to provide detailed maps of the damage. But how can satellites be used to mitigate and prepare for disasters? The NGO I worked with, All Hands, was trying to use satellite maps and GPS to track water lines and spigots. If there had been clear archived imagery, they could have located them based on past maps rather than guess at where they were beneath the rubble. At the 2006 General Assembly, the UN agreed to establish UN SPIDER, the United Nations Space-Based Information for Disaster Management and Emergency Response. Through UN SPIDER, countries can access archived imagery to track land changes and create risk maps. Their website also provides a space application matrix which provides information on satellite use for both disasters and human aspects. Here, we can look at Earth observation and remote sensing satellites in mitigation, preparedness, response, and recovery. We switch to disaster mode and look at the best ways to use satellites for risk management in earthquakes, floods, drought, and fire. In all these categories, we can see a need for maps and monitoring. One of the first sets of satellites we'll look at are the Sentinel satellites used by the Global Monitoring for Environment and Security in the European Union. These satellites monitor and forecast the state of the environment on a daily basis and can be pulled into disaster management in times of need. Their archive of up-to-date satellite imagery is available to anyone upon request. You just need to fill out the form. For early warning or emergency response, you can use rush mode. But for prevention, preparedness, and disaster risk reduction with its low urgency, you can get it through non-rush mode. Next is our own NASA. Many of NASA's satellites have overlapping missions, monitoring air quality, agriculture, weather, fires, and water variables. Most important is the Landsat program, monitored by NASA and the U.S. Geological Survey which began satellite operations in 1972. The Landsat satellites have enabled people to study many aspects of our planet and to evaluate the changes caused by natural process and human practice. Currently, both the Landsat 7 and the Landsat 8 are in use. Here we are at Mount St. Helens, three days before the 1979 eruption, captured by the Landsat 3. This video shows the eruption and the recovery of the area, as well as the improvement of satellite quality from false color land cover to sharp, clear images. Currently, one of the Landsat 7 priorities is to monitor conditions on the Colorado River. These are pictures of Lake Mead in May of 2000 and May of 2005. This artificial lake is crucial to bringing water to the west. You can see that conditions are slowly causing Lake Mead to dry up. Here, down here, and in June of 2005, the U.S. drought monitor placed Lake Mead in abnormally dry to moderate drought conditions. These satellites focus on imagery and can be affected by weather conditions, but technology is developing to make maps in any condition, as well as making maps in more three-dimensional scales. 
Leading this technology is the Japanese Space Agency and their satellite Daichi. Daichi carries a precise panchromatic sensor, PRISM, to observe detailed conditions of land from three directions. With it, Daichi can gauge geographical features and urban districts three-dimensionally. In addition, Daichi has PALSA, the synthetic aperture radar, that enables all weather, day and night observation of the Earth's surface, even through thick clouds. Daichi takes high density. In the next video, we can watch a 3D visual of Mount Etna in Italy. Sinking, bulging, and rising are indicators of different stages of volcanic activity, which may result in eruption. Monitoring the volcano's surface could lead to prediction of future eruptions. Many countries have their own space agencies, but for smaller countries or NGOs, there are three ways to incorporate satellite use. First, they could buy their own satellite. Currently, many private companies are working on miniaturized satellites. Companies like Skybox are making microsatellites and plan to launch their first one by the end of summer. These microsatellites are equipped with high resolution video that can capture any spot on Earth several times a day. RapidEye, who is also invested in Earth imaging satellites, is developing nano satellites. The company proposes to replace their five 350 pound imaging satellites with 35 18 pound nano satellites, which can, which can operate at the same mission cost and come back to the same area of the globe every three and a half hours. These miniaturized satellites are much more affordable and available to more countries than con conventional satellites. Being able to own your own satellite would help prevent cultural and language barriers that are in place with the sharing of information by other countries. If owning a satellite is too much work, you can just purchase the service of a company with a satellite. RapidEye is working to provide clear satellite imagery to customers by paying $1.28 per square kilometer with a minimum of 3,500 square kilometers, you can have satellites pointed at the location of your choice to aid in disaster management. But most city planners and smaller NGOs usually rely on the free services, such as Google Maps. Being able to point the satellite anywhere you pay for does present some security concerns that are not addressed on their company website. The last tool at our disposal is software for disaster risk reduction that incorporates satellite imagery, such as depiction. Here, we see the, land, the Landsat 7 imagery from NASA and the USGS. But used on the depiction software, the clarity is not very good. Also using satellites, we can get a land cover map showing the areas of higher urbanization and parks and lesser urbanization. Using depiction, we can also look at elevation, which soon satellite imagery will also be able to provide. The last technology that I looked at was Hazus. Hazus is a free SEMA software that you can get from their website, which interacts with ArcGIS. However, the software is a little finicky. If you don't have the right GIS software or the right system, it's impossible to get it to work. This is my presentation on satellite imagery and disaster risk reduction.